Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is a training video I'm doing for my team. <clears throat> I wanted to do a video that talked about the difference between a fee ownership of a, of a right-of-way and an easement ownership. And I realized before I did that, I needed to talk about what is, what is a fee ownership? What is a fee simple or fee simple absolute ownership of real estate, okay? And this is a, it's a little bit technical and, and a little bit complicated because we got to deal with some, some words that we don't use in, in English every day. Um, they, they come from old English or Latin and, and we got to kind of think about how they did things in medieval times because believe it or not, that's where a lot of our laws in America come from, come from, from medieval England. So, but it's really important if you're going to be a land surveyor and if you're going to work in real estate that you know what a fee simple absolute right to real property is or fee simple ownership of real property is, okay? So uh, I'm going to do my best in this short video to give you an introduction to that, okay? It's not a comprehensive coverage of the topic, but it'll at least get you familiar with it. So what is a fee simple or fee simple absolute ownership of, of when we're talking about real estate? What does that mean? So it's a type of interest or estate in real estate, okay? So let me break that down a little bit. Okay, when I say it's a type of interest or estate, what that means is you can have you can have different types of interests or rights to real estate. Okay, so um, as an example, let's say that I am going to I buy some property for my grandmother because I love my grandmother very much, and I say, grandmother, I'm going to uh, give you this property this house and this parcel to live on as long as you're alive, it's yours, okay? But when you die, it comes back to me, okay? So what I've given there is I've given my grandmother what's called a life estate. In other words, she is the owner of that property as long as she's alive, okay? But when she dies, it comes back to me, okay? So even while she's alive, even though she's the owner while she's alive, I still have an interest in that property because I'm gonna inherit that property when she dies is going to revert back to me because I only granted her a life estate. Okay, so in that particular example, my grandmother and I both have an interest in the property, right? She has an interest as the life hold estate holder, and I have an interest as the person that is going to get the property after the life estate ends, after my grandmother dies. Okay, another example is um, if, if uh, I buy a parcel and I have a driveway over my neighbor's parcel to get to the public road, Okay, he owns the parcel in fee, so he, he owns the parcel, he has that interest, he's the owner, but I have an interest in his property because I hold an easement right over his property. I have a right to drive over his property to get to the public road. Okay, so in that case, we both have an interest in the property. Now, my interest is, is inferior to his or less than his interest because he's the actual owner and I just have an easement right, okay? But that's just, we'll talk some more about that in, in, in some other videos. But that's an example of how more than one person can be interested in a piece of property. I'll give you one more example. My wife and I bought our house in Stockton, and we uh, we are the fee owners of it. Okay, but we're what they're we're, we're owners of, as what they call tenants in common. Okay, that means both my wife and I are on the deed. Okay, so we own that property together. Okay, as what they call tenants in common. What that means is I have a right to live there. <laughs> okay, in the house, and so does she. Right, <clears throat> so even if she gets mad at me, she can't throw me out, okay? Uh, because I have a right as a tenant in common. I have an interest in the property there, okay? So does she. So both my wife and I have an interest in the same piece of property, okay? So an interest is just a right that you have in a particular piece of real estate, okay? And when when we talk about real estate, we use this word real, R-E-A-L. It's not real as an opposite of fake. That's not what we mean, even though that word means that in English. It's a legal term, right, from Old English or Latin. And what it really means is when we say real, we mean not personal property. Okay, so real estate is land and things that are permanently attached to the land like a building. Okay, so it's not personal property. Personal property is like my, sh my boots, my shirt, my ball cap my wallet, my phone, that's all personal property. Okay, so when we say real estate, we mean not personal property, we mean land or things permanently attached to the land. Okay, so fee simple ownership is a type of interest in land and buildings that are permanently attached to the land. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what kind of interest is it? What makes it different from other interests like a lease or an easement? Okay, so 
in our system here in America, the fee simple owner or the fee simple absolute owner, that is the highest type of ownership. It's at the top of the stack, right? So <clears throat> that means when it comes to making decisions about the land and how it's used and what you do with it, the fee simple owner, he sits at the top, okay? Now, he, can, he, can, he or she can restrict what they can do with the property by giving interest to other people, but as a general rule, they're at the top of the stack, okay? So it's the highest form of ownership, okay? It's what we call a freehold, okay? Again, that's another term that comes from Old English, freehold. Okay, what that means is the ownership of the property isn't limited by time, okay? So it's not like when you have a lease, Okay, a lease is for a limited period of time. Okay, some easements are temporary. They're, they they could be for a limited period of time. Okay, the life estate I gave my grandmother in the example, that's limited by time. Okay, if you're the fee simple owner, owner, there is no limit on how long you own the property. If you can, if you could live forever, if you take your vitamins and exercise and you live forever, that property will always be yours. Now that seems silly, right? Well, of course, of course, if you buy property, it's yours forever. Okay, but we take we take that for granted. So the reason this became important is in medieval times, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of medieval times, <clears throat> when the king granted property to a nobleman, when that nobleman died, that property automatically went back to the king and he got to give it to, to whoever he wanted. Okay, So the nobleman only held the land as a life estate. Okay, Well, over time, as kings got politically weaker and the nobleman got stronger, they changed those rules. They said, hey, we want to change the rules so that once the king gives us the property, it when we die, it goes to our heir. Okay, It goes to our heirs, our sons or our daughters or nieces or nephews, whoever that heir would be. Okay, So one of the things that's important about fee simple ownership is there's no limitation on time and the land is inheritable. So when you die, it goes to whoever you've designated as your heir. Uh, we take that for granted today, but that used to be something that that property owners didn't have that right. That right belonged to the king. He had the right to, to give that property to somebody else after, after you died. Okay, so it's it's not limited by time. It's inheritable. I think this is one of the most important things about fee simple ownership. What that means, if you're the fee fee owner, is you have a right to possess that property. Okay, and you can exclude others. Okay, so if 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 you come to my house in Stockton, my property. Right. Um, if I tell you that I don't want you on my property and you come on my property anyways, I can have you arrested for trespassing. That's the right to exclude. So I can possess the land. That means I can occupy it. I can live on it. Okay. And I can exclude others. Right. Even in, in America, even the police can't come onto my property without permission unless they have a warrant from a judge. Okay. So the right to possess, the right to exclude. Okay. And then the other thing <clears throat> that's important about the fee owner is the fee owner has the ability to give away or sell rights to use his property or her property, okay? And so I like to call this the bag of, marble, bag of marbles. So if you think about everything you can do with a piece of property as a bag of marbles, only the fee owner has the right to get into the to the bag and give away marbles, okay? And, and that's usually done, usually those rights are given away as easements or as leases. So I might tell somebody uh, they could uh, lease my garage they could rent my garage to work on their car, work on their project car for a year. Okay, that would be a right. I might uh, give my neighbor the right to drive over my property to get to the public road. That would be an easement. That's a marble. Okay, now he has the right to drive over that. I might sell somebody else the rights to drill for oil and gas on my property. That would be another marble I could give away. Okay, I might um, give somebody a, a lease to uh, ranch cattle on my land. Okay, that would be a marble I could give away. Okay, so. Only the fee owner can give marbles away from the bag of marbles, right? If I give uh, my neighbor an easement to drive over my property to get to the road, he can't reach into the bag of the marbles and, and sell somebody, somebody the right to ranch cattle on my property. He's just an easement holder. He has his marble. He doesn't have the bag of marbles, right? Only the fee owner has the bag of marbles. And it's not all, it's, it's not all um, fun and games, okay? If you're the fee simple owner in, in the American legal system, you also have responsibilities as a landowner, not just, not just right. These are all rights and privileges, but for example, you have to pay tax on the property. So the fee owner, that's the guy that pays the taxes, okay, as a general rule, okay? You also have, for example, in, um, in my city, you have a responsibility to maintain your property, 
right? You can't let the weeds get three feet tall and become a fire hazard, things like that. Okay, so there's also, there's rights and responsibilities that come with being the fee simple owner. So that's what we mean when we talk about fee estate or fee property or the fee parcel is the parcel owned in fee. That's what we mean. It's the highest form of ownership or the highest type of interest in real estate that you can have in the United States legal system. So hopefully that makes sense. I can tell I need to do some more videos about this. It's, it's not the simplest topic to explain or understand, but I hope, I hope this video will at least give you an introduction.